So in this example, we're asked to calculate and compare the widths of a top hat function, as we looked at in example five, and its Fourier transform. So I've copied the text for example five here, which on the right hand side shows the top hat function. Now it's clear that this function has a width between minus tor and plus tor, so we can write that its width, we'll call that delta t, is equal to 2 tor. Remember that this is a function of t, and so the width is written in terms of delta t. We now need to work out the width of the Fourier transform. The Fourier transform is given by this equation here. Now this is a sinc function, and we're going to define the width as being between the first two zeros of this function. We have to be a little bit careful with this function. If it was just a sine function, the first zero would occur when the argument of the sine function is equal to zero. But because of the term in the denominator, this is no longer a zero. The first two zeros occur when the argument of the sine function is equal to plus or minus pi. So what we can write is that we need to find out when omega tor is equal to plus or minus pi. We can rearrange this to find that omega is equal to plus or minus pi divided by tor. And so the width is defined between these two solutions. So we say that the width of the Fourier transform delta omega is equal to 2 pi divided by tor. So we now have our two results. We have the width of the original function. We said that's equal to 2 tor and we have the width of the Fourier transform, that's equal to 2 pi divided by tor. And what we can see is they are inversely related to each other. Delta t is proportional to tor, delta omega is inversely proportional to tor. Another way of writing this is to write the product of the two widths, delta t times delta omega. That's equal to 2 tor multiplied by 2 pi over tor. We see that we get, for the result, a value equal to 4 pi, which is independent of tor. And this is just simply another way of saying that the two widths are inversely proportional to each other. So we've shown that for the top hat function, the width of the original function is inversely proportional to the width of the Fourier transform. And as we'll see, this is a general property of Fourier transforms.